Hi, my name is uh, Johan and um, today I will show you how to assemble a pair of uh, Alvar Trail running shoes. First up, I'm going to go through the, the tools. Uh, what you have received in your kits, you received a pricking iron, you received two needles and a, um, what do you call it? Or uh, to make holes. Um, in addition to that, you will need something to hit with, uh, a hammer of some sort. You will need a uh, knife or something to cut with. It may also work with scissors. And you will need a caliper or a compass or something to mark a length with. So let's get started. So first up we're going to go through the the pattern poster. Now each pattern poster contains uh, three different widths and for every width there's five different corresponding uh, or five different ball heights. Uh, so down here I don't know if you can see it there. So down here you have some um, indications of how big the seam allowance is from the cutting edge and the distance from the um, edge to the to the seam. Uh, to start with you have to pick out your um, your width and ball height from this um, um, from the poster so uh, up here there's three different widths uh, marked as red blue and black and for each width you have corresponding uh, uppers with different ball heights so if you for example have a uh, 107 uh, width that means you're going to go th for the, the blue pattern, which means that you're going to use this one. And from this one, you're going to pick out your ball height, let's say 163 millimeters. That means that you're going to use the second line, second line from the outer. Um, all right. So there's uh, some different ways you can do this. Either you have an overlay or and um, trace the pattern to create the sort of templates to cut from, or you cut directly from the from the pattern posters, um, which is what I'm going to do now. All right. So when you've uh, located your uh, size in width and ball height, it's time to start cutting out the, the pattern pieces to use as templates when when you cut the leather. So let's start with the uh, with the sole. So in this case I'm going to use the uh, the black pattern which is in this case 111. So now that you've uh, cut out your pattern pieces and it's time to lay them out on, on the leather and on the website there's a, a rough guide to how you can place your pattern pieces to, to fit them all into the leather piece that you have received. Right now I'm not, I'm not going to use this uh, guide as this piece is, has an irregular shape. Uh, I use uh, tape to just Tape this onto. You can use uh, washi tape or or some some tape that you see fit. So when when you've taped your uh, pattern piece to the leather, it's time to cut out the the actual piece. This is a stage where you can real really take your time, and it's better to go slow than to make a mistake.
and it's also a good idea to mark out the uh, the fit line the position of the fit line i use a um, regular pencil so in in the back and then in the front to mark out the to get the alignment of the shoe right so when you get to this piece um, it's a good idea to when you when you're going to cut out this area it's a good idea to angle the the cut in in this corner slightly like this so you start straight and then you ease over to angle it slightly so we'll mark out the fit lines and at this stage you're gonna make some holes for the uh, for the lacing so you bring out your uh, wood paper to make holes and when that is done you're gonna bring out your uh, uh, pricking iron and mark out the holes where the tongue is gonna attach so you start up here and you just press down two holes like this go from the other end mark out holes and you continue towards the center like this Now in, in the center you, you're, you may get an uh, unevenness or um, one stitch which is slightly larger and you also mark, so you can see this, you also start, you start from the center up here and mark out one, two and three, one, two and three. All right, so now we have our position for the tongue marked out. We have our holes. We have marked out our fit lines. Um, all right. So when you cut out your uh, your tongue piece, again you're going to use your pricking iron and mark out the beginning of the stitch just with two marks here and from the other side two marks here that's going to position the tongue you, do, you don't need to do the rest now you're also going to mark out the, the stitch holes for this little piece that holds the, the lacing so you, you place the pricking iron with the center line just in between and mark out two holes there and then you go one out like this on each side and the same on the top all right so now we have our pieces cut out and it's time to mark out the stitch lines and fit lines and i'm using a uh, caliper for this you can also use a compass or even a ruler might do um, this one is really handy so you have your seam allowance uh, distance from the edge and I've put the caliper to 9.3 in this case so let's start with this piece you just go along the edge and make a mark where the stitch line will be like this and along this edge you have a fit line for the front toe piece so you will use that line to glue the toe piece in place and right here we have a stitch line and on this edge we have a fit line 
where the heel piece will be glued so like that so that one done and this piece same here mark out where the the glue will be and uh, if if you don't want to use glue then uh, this will be a, a line where you place your stitches like that and last piece is the toe piece where you go along the bottom line like this so next up is to continue to mark out uh, stitch lines you start with the toe piece and you go two millimeters from the upper edge like this this is where you're going to punch holes to make your stitches and we continue with the uh, upper piece now you're going to make stitches here here And you're also going to mark out this edge like this. Now we're also going to mark out the stitches for the on the other side of the um, lacing holes, and just measure the distance from hole here and then go from this like this from from the edge and make a mark like this and the same on the other side okay uh, so now we're gonna mark out the cut line where we're gonna cut up cut the in, in the last step we're gonna cut the the shoe out of the uh, glued outsole so this will be two millimeters or just above it from this stitch line so you have your seam allowance of 9.3 in this case and you subtract uh, two millimeter from this so that's 7.3 millimeters in this case and you just go along the edge like this again and on the other side like this and also on the toe piece all right so then we're ready to start putting this together so now we're going to start to assemble this shoe and the first thing we're going to assemble is to attach these uh, reinforcements for the for the lacing and I start by sort of chamfering this edge with the knife like this to thinen out the um, the edge all right so now we're gonna bring out some glue and you can also do this without glue just to stitch it directly and in that case you have to make your holes first I'm using a water-based contact glue which is really nice to work with like that 
Now you don't have to go all the way up since these are going to stick out and you're going to cut them, cut them clean afterwards. And we do the same. Oh, I forgot one thing. It's a good thing to mark out so that we're where your glue is going to go. And do this like this. And you put glue on this side as well. Alright, so now we're going to let the glue uh, dry for about half an hour or 20 minutes. So now the glue has uh, dried and it's time to put these pieces in place. And the edge that you have chamfered goes on, on the bottom. And you place this along the edge like this. Now to get the glue to really stick you can give it a good smack. Alright, so what we're going to do now is to cut this green and you just cut along this edge. And again we're going to use our uh, Big Fita, I have to check that that is in English. And we're gonna make it. So now it is time to mark out where the stitching is gonna go. And I use my pricking iron and start where from the um, from the marks you made for the tongue. Start so you start down here and you follow the the line that you made with the with the caliper and go up like this and you start here on the corner and and right here you make one hole sort of in in the middle and we continue with the other side all right so when you marked out your stitches it's time to put the holes and do the circle So now we've made all our holes for the um, for the stitching on this piece. Before we get started stitching this, we're gonna make the stitching holes on on the tongue as well. And since we've already marked these out, so two holes here to put position the tongue and we're going to make these holes the piece that holds the um, the lacing and the same on this part all right so then we're ready to start stitching So we're going to bring out our needles and some thread. So the first part that we're going to stitch is this little piece that holds the lacing to the tongue. So we take um, well, about that much thread and we put one needle in each end of this so you need your your two needles so 
you have something like this. So when you start like this with an uh, even amount of thread on each side and your other piece like this and then you take your second needle and you go from the back and out after which you tighten the stitch now right here I usually put two stitches at the end so take one needle and go through both holes again and then tighten the stitch then you continue to the next hole from the front now it's it's a good idea to to not pull the the thread all the way to not pull it tight to just leave a little loop here when you go through with the second needle from the back this way you can avoid piercing the the thread and you tighten the stitch now to finish the, the stitch I go up here like this and with the second needle I go in between so that the needle comes out in between these line, uh, these two parts and then you remove the needles and you tie a knot actually two knots like this and now you just simply cut these okay so first stitch done to determine how much thread you need you can measure the length of the stitch line with a piece of thread or something else and in this case this is 18 centimeters now you take 18 centimeters and multiply it by 2.5 and add another 30 centimeters so that comes to 75 75 centimeters of thread for this stitch so there's 50 and 27 so this is how much how much thread is needed and while we're at it we make another one 75 centimeters long so stitch length multiplied by 2.5 and add another extra 30 centimeters then you have a, a good good length thread like this again two needles one at each end and you start right at the bottom right here now you can you can of course have this free like this or if you have access to one you can use a stitching horse which I will use now So a stitching horse is basically just a clamp to hold the piece that you're working on. Uh, makes life easier, but it's uh, 
it's not fully necessary. So two pieces, same length on each side, and you start cutting from the front and second one from the back. Then you tighten the thread. Now there's always a chance that you happen to pierce the thread just like this. If you do that just pull the needle out again and try to go through the hole without piercing the thread. Alright, <clears throat> so now we'll, we've made the stitches for the um, reinforcement pieces, it's time to attach the, the tongue. And I've made the corresponding holes in, in the tongue as in the upper part. And I start the stitch right here. Pull the thread through and even length on each side. I go through and tighten the stitch. So now we've come to the last stitch and you will have a stitch line that looks like this. And you have two threads sticking out at the, at the bottom. What you do now is that you go through in between the tongue and the upper, like this. And with the second needle, same thing, in between, it's a bit tricky. So you come out in between these two pieces and here you tighten it slightly and tie a knot or actually two knots and you cut these all right so, uh, so far tongue is attached. So now that the tongue is attached, the next part is to attach the, the front piece. And first we're going to glue this to the upper part. Uh, I start by marking out where the glue is going to go. So nine millimeters here or the alright so again we take some glue and apply it on the upper part. All right, so now that both parts has uh, glue on them, we're gonna let that dry. All right, so now the the glue has um, dried and it's time to glue this toe piece to the upper part and I've made a little mark right here which I can align with a corresponding mark on the on the toe piece so I start by pressing the glue down like this 
then I follow my fit line this side that and on the other side And at this stage you can use the, the back of your, of your hammer to sort of press the two pieces firmly together. All right, so we can, we have a piece that looks like this. And next step here is that we're going to mark out the, the stitch line. So we start about two millimeters above the, um, the stitch line for the, where the sole is going to go. this and you follow along this edge all right so we've reached the end and now we can start making our holes All right, so now it is time to put the stitches on this um, toe piece. And again, you roughly measure the, the length by using a piece of thread, for example. So it's, let's see how long this is. So it's roughly 32 centimeters. So that multiplied by 2.5 and add 30 centimeters is uh, what is it one just above one meter so it's one meter ten to be exact all right so here's our thread and again we put one needle in each end of the thread yep like this and you just start at one end like this and from the back And you tighten the stitch gently. Don't don't tighten it too much, um, otherwise you'll risk breaking the thread, and you have to start over. Now, at the starting point, I usually put a double stitch, so I go back one hole with one of the threads. And now you just continue down this this line. So we have now come to the to the last stitch, and you have a double stitch at the end and at the start. And you have your two threads sticking out at the bottom. What you do now is that you go with each thread in between these two 
and this is a, a bit tricky you may need to use something to push with and the thread comes out in between these two pieces and you do the same with the other thread so you go back one stitch and in between and you tighten it slightly and then tie a knot all right so we've stitched the toe piece to the upper all right so now we're gonna attach the um, these two ends to create the heel and so these two pieces are gonna first be glued and after that stitched and I see that I have forgotten to mark out the um, where this little tongue will meet up on the side so I'm gonna place my my paper guide and just with a pen mark out where, where this will line up and I have a line right here so that's where the glue will go. All right, so now it's time to apply glue to these two ends. All right, like that. And I put my hand on underneath this like that. So we're gonna let that um, dry for about half an hour to 20 minutes. So now the glue has uh, dried and we're gonna attach this part to this part. Now this is a bit tricky when you do it the first time and you line this up with your fit lines and you just position this along the fit line that you made earlier and press this together and you can also give this a little tap with your with your hammer all right so now we have a an upper part which is coming together and next part is that we will put down the stitching for this line so i start here and go out one two and three put down a stitch here And you just continue down this line. You stop when you're about two millimeters from, from this um, bottom stitch line. All right, so now we're gonna punch the holes and again you take your pricking iron and so now that you've uh, 
made your stitching holes you have a piece that looks like this right so now we're gonna put the stitches for the heel piece and I've measured out my thread and have two needles one in each end so I start up here with the first stitch and from the front and with the second needle I go from the back and then I just continue down this line and at the end I make a double stitch after which I pull the thread in between these two pieces and tie a knot so I've finished this uh, stitch line I have a double stitch at the end and my two threads sticking out at the back and right now I again tie a double knot so now we're going to glue this uh, upper part to the uh, binding sole and there's two ways you can do this either you glue the whole thing in one one step or you glue it in two steps uh, if you glue it in one step um, it's easier to apply the glue uh, but you're more likely to make make a mistake um, in getting the alignment of the shoe right so right now you're gonna line up the the mark on the binding sole with the upper part in the front and you're gonna line up the back as well so I usually prefer to glue the first glue the front and back and after that glue the part in between it makes applying the glue a bit more tricky but and it takes a bit more time but you're less likely to make a mistake and get an uh, unaligned shoe all right so first I'm gonna mark out sort of the area where where I'm gonna apply glue so and you don't have to be precise when you do this um, so I roughly align this mark in this mark and make a small mark about here and the same on on the other side here so that means that you're gonna apply glue right here and on the inside here and I make the same on the back piece see if you can see this uh, so I apply glue to about here and to about here okay so when applying glue to these I turn this piece inside out like this And you start by applying glue to this part. So now that both parts has glue on them, right here and in the back, and corresponding on on the upper part, right here and right here in the back. 
We're gonna let that dry for um, half an hour to 20 minutes and we're gonna press them together. All right, so now the, <clears throat> the glue has dried and we're gonna attach these two pieces together. Uh, this is again a, a bit tricky when you do it the first time. So you align these two marks um, here and you align these two edges. And on the other side, and don't worry if you miss a millimeter or something like that, it's no big issue. Alright, so front piece attached, and I press a little bit with my the back of my hammer. Right, so the back piece. Now this is where the shoe will get some of its shape. Right, and I press this with my hammer. All right, so now we have uh, attached back and front, and second step is that we're gonna glue these two open open ends. So like I said, applying the glue in this way makes the application more tricky, but you gain that you get a perfect alignment of the shoe. So just take your time and be careful. Alright, so we're gonna let that dry and I usually use a piece of um, outsole or something else which is slightly springy to avoid that these two ends touch each other. All right. So now that the glue has dried we're gonna attach these open holes and this will give the shoe sort of a shape of a banana sort of so Second one. And there we go. So again, I use the back of my hammer to 
press these two parts together. Like that. And now we're going to put the last seam on this one. So before we start stitching, we're going to make uh, the stitching holes. And first I will mark out where the holes are going to be. And I will start at the back. So right where you have your alignment mark and you have your stitch line, which is the second line. Just follow along the edge. So I've uh, marked out my holes and uh, pierced the skin with my pricking iron uh, all around. And it's time to put in the last uh, stitch on this shoe. So I have my thread with my two needles and I start at the back. So I have now stitched this all the way around and come to the end at the back where I have put a double stitch as the last stitch. I now have two threads sticking out at the bottom and what I do now is that I remove the needles and tie a double knot. Like that, and so I've uh, now finished this um, upper, and we're going to continue by giving this uh, an outsole. So we've now come to the part where we're going to glue this upper to the outsole, and. Uh, I start by sort of shaping this edge a bit, just pulling it upwards like this. It makes the gluing and the fitting easier. Like that. And I'm using um, Rhenia Aqualim. 315 by the way but any any contact glue will uh, will do so first we apply glue to the uh, outsole Done. And now we're going to put glue on the uh, upper. And you should see too that you get glue on, on, on all pieces, sort of an even, try to get an even layer all, all, the, way, all, all, all the way out to the edge. Alright. So we're going to leave this to dry and after that we're going to press this together. So now the glue has dried, uh, it's time to attach these, this upper to the outsole and let's see here. You do this by you start at the front and you sort of roll the shoe onto the the outsole and make sure that you Get 
get it all the way up to the to the edge and you roll up the, the heel like this you're gonna lift the, the shoe a little bit so now we've glued our outsole uh, to get the glue to really stick we have to hammer this so I start with the edge and go along the edge like this Okay, so we've come this far, we've uh, glued the upper to the uh, outsole and this stage you can, um, one way is to add another line of stitches all the way through the outsole and the upper. Um, I'm not sure if this is necessary. Um, but if you if you want to you can do that. Um, otherwise the next step now is to cut this clean. And what you do then is that you use your knife and make sure you have a sharp sharp fresh blade and you shouldn't go closer than absolute minimum two millimeters from from the thread when you cut this it's better to go up to maybe about three millimeters um, um, and i usually give it some extra space in in the heel area um, just about maybe one one or two millimeters extra and so what you do now is that you you mark out where you're gonna cut the shoe uh, you can use your caliper or compass again and go from this outer edge and sort of mark out where you're going to cut the shoe so i've already done this and uh, after that you start with your knife and you go gentle and slow along this line and you're going to cut around this shoe a couple of times until you go all the way through So I have now cut this shoe clean. So voila, your first homemade custom running shoe made from natural veg tanned leather and a Vibram rubber outsole. So thanks for watching this uh, tutorial on how to make your own uh, custom running shoes. Um, I wish you the best of luck and I hope you will enjoy your shoes. Thank you.